So let's go into these adding a banner to your course image. This is some lecture notes I've created and I'm going to click on this menu. Actually, I'll show you if you click here, let's say you didn't click edit HTML, but that's what you originally wanted to do. Even if you come in here, there's going to be a button here to edit this HTML. All right. So this is just basic content that I've typed. Now it's really important because this is a web page and we want it to be accessible that you use headings. And it's also easier for students to read content when it's broken up into smaller chunks with headings because on the web we don't read like we read in a book. We don't read from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. We actually skim all of the headings first and then we find the section that we're interested in reading and then we start reading that one. So headings in web browsers are really, really important. So the name of your page, you should always make that a heading one. That's the major heading that, that encompasses what this entire page is about. You should only have one H1 on a page. Then it's kind of like outlining. Image resources and how to change the banner image, those are pretty equal to me in terms of um, the type of content or like the level of content, the hierarchy of content. So really think about outlining with this. So this would be like capital A, this would be like capital B. So I'm gonna highlight this and choose heading two. And again, because this is equal, I'm gonna make this heading two. Now, if for some reason I had a couple other headings in here that were about image resources, I could highlight those and make them heading three. You can go all the way down to heading six, but it's really important that you keep this hierarchy in there. All right, so um, we wouldn't, well, let me explain that a little bit further. We wouldn't wanna have this a heading two and then something down here, a new, a new heading down here, a heading four, because then we've skipped heading three and screen readers and accessibility tools will have trouble with that and you don't wanna have that happen. All right, so this is looking a little, it's a little bit easier to skim this now. So let's start talking about how to format your content. So here's our editing toolbar. It looks like standard editing toolbar, as you can see, um, that we have bold, italic, underline. You also have the ability to do superscript and subscript and strike through. And then you have indent and outdent. And you also have um, the ability to create an unordered list, which is bullets. But you can also create an ordered list, which is numbers and then you can choose the alignment settings, et cetera. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just, let's say this is help for our students. Okay, so let's say I wanna make that bold. I'll just highlight it, bold. Um, so if I wanted to italicize this content, so it's, it's basically like formatting in Word, so I'll let you guys kind of play with that. Um, in terms of font family and font size, it's just easier to just leave it simple the way it is because it's really easy to read this content. Um, same with font size. If you don't change the font size, then if they choose for accessibility reasons to zoom in or zoom out from the text by doing control plus or control minus in their browser, then they have that ability. But if you set this specifically to be a size, like if I highlight this and say, this must be 14 point font, then no matter how much they try to zoom in or zoom out or um, other accessibility features, it'll still have an effect because it still thinks it should be 14 point font. So I don't mess with font size unless I have a really, really good reason to. You also have the ability to add a table and then here are all the properties. I'll let you explore that one as well. And then this other button down here will add, this is kind of the extra components button. I kind of um, am used to saying kitchen sink button because that's what other um, website builders use as the term, but for now we'll call it extra components. And this is where you can do things like you can add different um, uh, equations and you can do undo or redo, which you can also do control Z or control Y to have that happen and then copy and paste. Up here is where we can start adding some different content, like we can insert um, embedded code for, so we can add a YouTube video, we can create, um, we can upload a document or something from our computer. Uh, we can do a lot of different um, things here. So I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so <clears throat> let's say I wanted to link this to unsplash.com. So I need to actually go to that website, copy this, come back into the course, and then click link to paste that URL. So I'm gonna come down here and choose URL and paste that, and then put what text they should see here. 
and then choose whether or not it should open up in the same window or a new window, etc. So I'll just leave it new window because it's an outside site. And there we go. So that's how you add basic links in there. And then last but not least is adding an image. Okay, so I have an image here. I'm gonna show you it on my desktop. So here's my image on the desktop. And I'm gonna replace this text with just an empty space. And in order to add an image right into the lecture notes, we don't wanna necessarily attach the file. We actually wanna place it in there by using this insert image button. So we'll click that and choose my computer because that's where it is. Now, if you had um, a URL, like let's say, um, I don't know why we picked McDonald's, but if I click share, see this link? So this link I could copy and then come back into the course and I could paste that in there and it would add the image. However, that image is massive, so you have to be careful with the images you use because if they're too big, they're gonna be like something we have to left, right scroll for, which is terrible. So I'm just gonna choose from my computer and there are two options here. You can drag this image into this Dropbox area or you can click upload and find it on your computer. So since, since I have it right here, I'll just drop it. And again, I can choose my destination if I want to. And since I created this unit one folder, I'm gonna choose that. And then I will click add. Now, in order to have accessibility, um, you need to make sure you add alternative text. So this is text that if somebody can't see the image, whether for a disability reason or even if their internet is just slow so they've disabled their images, they still need to have that image described to them. So this image is showing the upload button to change the banner image. So I'm gonna say um, upload button to change the banner image. So if this was a puppy playing with a ball, you'd put that in there. Um, and it's really important because if it's like a graph and it's demonstrating the cholera outbreak or something like that, they need to have some kind of a description of what they should be seeing in the image and what information they should glean from it. So let's go ahead and click OK. And by the way, if it's decorative for some reason, I would check this, but don't, I just don't add any decorative images because they're pointless and they distract. So let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so now that image is directly into the notes here, and that's the basics of editing. Now, in terms of these, um, in terms of these bullets, another thing that you can do is, if I come in here and say um, outside copyright free sites, and I wanted these to be indented, I could come over here and indent, and I can also back it out to an outdent. So if I come over here to add something else and I don't want this to be in this indented section, I can, oops, back it up. All right, so I think that's the basics of editing your content. When you're done, go ahead and click save and close and it'll show you how it will look to a student. So now it's a lot easier for them to skim. It's easier for them to get to these resources because they can link out to them and to see exactly what you're trying to point out with your images.